because your um, your readers no longer have to wait until you send a report to a team to report on something to let the, the public know what happened. In many instances, news stories are broken on Facebook, they're broken on, on Twitter a long time, even before they hit um, the, the traditional media. And that presents some, some um, challenges, as it were, for trained journalists and um, commercial established media entities. How exactly do we respond? What about our responsibility of um, being accurate? Um, how do we respond holding up to holding, adhering to the high standard of accuracy while at the same time trying to to um, be, be, be able me. to help your readers to understand the distinction between what you do and what is the traditional approach to journalism. Um, I think that if we don't do that. Uh, what we, we are going to be uh, perhaps guilty of eventually is diluting what is journalism to such an extent mm -hmm. that it will lose its credibility. And that is the one thing we can't afford because traditional journalism has played a key role in the um, furtherance of democracy, in the preservation of democracy, and in the building of democracy. And we can't get away from that. Right. No, I think those are very good points, Ray. Um, and I would like to bring attention also to uh, something that Kenton mentioned when he was speaking particularly about the role that social media plays in influencing how people find out information um, and, and how this affects the role of traditional journalism as well as uh, digital media. I mean, as you mentioned, the story is often broken before yes. it even gets to the journalist. I remember when I was in Washington, D.C. this summer and we had that mini earthquake, um, everybody tweeted it moments after the earthquake happened, much faster than any journalist could have put anything on a website. So then the the news has to change, doesn't it? I mean, yes. because you're not reporting the earthquake, you have to have more than just that. I don't really pick up on news. The most thing, the most likely traditional thing that I still will do is is radio. And radio simply only has an advantage that w w whether it's Personal or uh, uh, in personal mode or work mode, that you can switch on a radio and move around and you can hear what's going on. But as for a television newscast, which you got to wait for at seven o'clock or waiting for a newspaper the next day, no, I I go on the internet. Very interesting question. Um, I think that also uh, here let's um, highlight some questions that we have from online. This also is something that we've talked about a little bit. Um, <coughs> Global Highlights asks, um, who is a journalist and why does it matter? And we've already talked a little bit about, you know, how digital media has changed the definition of a journalist. But I think talking a little bit more about why it matters, how we define a journalist, is also an important question to ask. Um, Kenton, wh what are your thoughts on this? I think it matters because it goes to the, the question of credibility. Correct. And um, we expect journalists to function in a particular way to observe a certain code of ethics, to adhere to certain standards and certain principles. So it matters. In my, um, if I'm reading a story and I know that this story is written by a journalist, then I expect certain things. I would be more inclined to accept everything in the story as being factual and to trust that the journalist has taken the time to verify what to verify what's in the story. But if the story is written by someone who I know is not a journalist, then I would become more skeptical Correct. and say, oh, you know, there's a possibility that this might not be true. Mm -hmm. um, there's a possibility that this person hasn't asked to write. But with a journalist, um, everybody has their bias. It's an inherent part of being human at time especially in our small Caribbean society. But if something is written by a journalist, I would expect that that journalist would put on his or her professional cap and say, okay, let me put my personal biases aside and make a concerted effort at objectivity. So I, be, I, I believe that um, that handle of journalists should not be applied. Like, I can remember one time I was listening to a radio station in St. Vincent and there was this prominent lawyer who came on and he referred to the host 
as a journalist and I'm asking myself, you know, this guy, this, the, the host of the program is just an agitator, it's just a rabble around. And if people are going to make all of these, um, these confusions and believe that everybody who writes something um, for consumption in the, in the media or everyone who's on it on TV or everybody who's on radio is a journalist, then I, I think it, 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 it is a serious problem, a serious issue that we as journalists who understand what it really means to be a journalist, who understand what the practice of that profession that is called journalism entails, should defend the um, the short attention span that is currently associated with the electronic media, um, we will not do as effectively as traditional media until, of course, people become a little more accustomed. Um, Barbados today, I still find it, um, I don't know what's the correct word, I, I'm still boggled. Uh, my mind is still boggled by the fact that on any given day, upwards of 25,000 people read Barbados today using BlackBerry. Um, we produce, we provide a service, but personally, I don't find the BlackBerry device uh, a, 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 an inviting um, instrument for reading a publication. You may glance at a headline or something so you know what's happening, but not to read an entire thing. But based on the times that are recorded, people are spending time on it, reading it. So that says to me that while we who are trained in a specific way perhaps expect a certain outcome, uh, persons who are not uh, of that ilk have a totally different expectation um, and the BlackBerry may turn out to be very much a device that people are comfortable with uh, without having the kinds of um, backgrounds that we have. So the, I think the device, certainly the, the tablet, is going to change everything. Um, it has started to and I'm reasonably sure that within a short, a short space of time somebody is going to put a tablet on the market that is going to sell for $100. Um, and if you think about it, a newspaper at two dollars a day multiplied by uh, what three hundred and sixty odd a year, you have a black, you have a device that will last you for the next five years, four or five years, at a fraction of the cost of buying a newspaper every day.